In this data set, I report on what I call sustainable or fundamental growth rates in equity. You're saying, what's a sustainable or fundamental growth rate in equity? Step back. You can take the net income for any company and write it as a product of its return equity, which is net income divided by book, book value of equity times the book value of equity, or invested equity. So if your return equity is stable, the only way for you to increase your net income is by increasing your book equity. Now, how do you increase your book equity? Well, the simplest way to increase book equity is to retain earnings. So think of that as your change in investor equity, though I will give you a more generic version you can use later in this session. The effect on earnings will depend largely on what kind of return equity you can deliver with that retained earnings. So your expected growth in equity income for a company with stable return equity, and the key word is stable return equity, is the return equity times the retained earnings as a percentage of net income. That's called the retention ratio. That is the oldest sustainable growth equation you will see used in practice is return equity times retention ratio. Now, if you think about it, if you have a company with the return equity of 20%, that retains 80% of its net income. In other words, it pays out only 20%. 80% times 20% gives me a 16% growth rate. Note that your retention ratio can never exceed 100%. It cannot be lower than 0%. So those kind of constrain your sustainable growth rates. Now, with that in place, let's, let, let me talk a little bit about how I computed the return equity you see on this data set. Return equity is net income, right? Net income can be before extraordinary items, after extraordinary items, normalized, not normalized, lots of choices. Book value of equity is the equity capital invested, at least based on accountants. That book value equity can be negative if you lose enough money for long enough periods or you do a huge buyback. So net income divided by book equity gives you return equity as long as the book value of equity is positive. If it's negative, return equity becomes not meaningful. Now, the way I compute return equity for the companies in my data set that, that create this, these industry averages is I had to make some choices. For the net income, I use the actual net income for the year. So I could have used net income before extraordinary items or normalized net income or average across time. I use the net income for the most recent 12 months, which if I'm reporting return equity in January 1st of a year will be through September 30th for most companies because the last quarter will not be in. It's a trailing 12 month data. For the book value of equity, I could use the book value of equity at the start of the most recent fiscal year, the end or the average, I use the start and I've stayed consistent. Now, you might decide that averages work better for you, but my return on equity is computed on the start of the fiscal year. And if book equity turns negative, as I noted, it will mean return on equity cannot be computed. So my return equity numbers reflect net income over the most recent 12 months divided by book value at the start of the most recent fiscal year. Now, in, using the, in, in coming up with the retention ratio, the first measure I use is a very simple measure. I look at the retention divided by earnings. In other words, one minus the payout ratio. That number is constrained to be between zero and 100%, so I compute the retention ratio. But one problem with the retention ratio is a company can retain earnings but not put it into operations. It can go as a cash balance. So a more specific measure of equity reinvestment it looks at investment in net capex and change in working capital and acquisitions, net of the debt you use to fund that. In other words, it's a reinvestment you see in a free cash flow to the firm calculation minus the amount of debt that you raise to cover that reinvestment. So a variant on the retention ratio and one that is much broader and perhaps more specific to a company that actually captures how much it's reinvesting is to look at the equity reinvestment instead of the retention as a person of net income. That equity reinvestment rate can be greater than 100%. Right, company can reinvest more by raising new equity. It can be less than 0% if the company is actually making itself smaller. So it's no longer constrained to be between zero and 100%. So that's a broader measure of reinvestment rate if you don't trust retention ratios. I hope you find this data set useful. But remember again, it applies only if return equity stays stable over time. If your margins are changing, your returns on equity are changing, do not use a sustainable growth equation to come up with growth rates for the long term. It's not going to hold up. In steady state, once you get to terminal value, by all means use sustainable growth rates. But now year one, year two, your growth rates can be well in excess or well below what you get as a sustainable growth rate. I hope you found this session useful and thank you very much for listening.